This is a digital music trends uh, coverage of Medium 2014, an interview with uh, Alan Bargfrede, executive director of uh, Rethink Music at Berklee College of Music. DMT's coverage is brought to you by CI, the leading provider of digital delivery services to the independent community on ci-info.com. Hi Alan, I'm great to have you on, how's it going? Yeah, thanks for having me, I'm glad to be back. Yeah, it's really good to have you. And so uh, it's been a while since you last spoke uh, and uh, there's lots to catch up on, uh, especially on the recent uh, Rethink Music side, but also like new projects at Berkeley. So let's start with uh, Rethink Music. You had quite a few initiatives happening last year, uh, culminating in a, a Europe event, which actually happened in Berlin. So how has the Rethink Music project uh, progressed over, over the past 12 months? You know, it's really been growing. We've had, uh, last year we did events in here in Cannes. We did something in Valencia. We did something in Barcelona, something in Bilbao. And then we did a startup day in Berlin. Um, and so this year we're going to continue that traveling format where we'll, we'll take different workshops around the world. Um, probably going to do a couple of startup days, one again in Berlin and another in the U.S. at some point. Um, but it's really growing and, and we're getting a lot of traction for people who want us to come to different cities and, and deliver the kind of academic thinking, but also the, the workshop type format. Um, to talk about the future of the music industry. Yeah. And what we do is a little different than a, than a conference because we're not really focused on panels. We're focused on more interactivity with the participants. Sure. And so what, what happened in Berlin? How, how was the uh, day structured? Um, so Berlin, we opened with um, a keynote interview and we did, we did two panels where people did just kind of discuss the current state of the music industry. But most of the afternoon was focused on music startups presenting their projects. So we had over 100 submissions from, I think, 32 different countries. Right. Um, and we ended up with 12 presenters, and then we had one, uh, one winner, which was a company called Nagwell Sounds, and they do interactive music, so they allow you to create music based on body movement. Yeah, they're actually part of the Midem Lab uh, this year. Yeah, they are. Yeah. Um, so it's a cool project. And you know what we're trying to do is really foster that next generation of music industry and music startups. and. Um, at Berkeley, we've got a lot of students who are very entrepreneurial, and, and the music industry as a, as a whole is an entrepreneurial industry. I mean, an artist or a songwriter is an entrepreneur. That's, they have their own business, which is their creative art. Um, so we're trying to do more to foster that. Yeah. So in, in that vein, you've actually started an entrepreneurship program at Berkeley. So how, how is that structured? Yeah, so we just launched last week the Institute for Creative Entrepreneurship at Berkeley. Um, that will be headed by Panos Panay, who was the founder and CEO of Sonic Bids, has now joined Berkeley. Um, and it really will be kind of siloed into three, silo is not the right word, but we'll have three segments of the project. One is to continue the Rethink Music format yeah. and being out and active within the industry in different parts of the world. Um, the other, another part of it will be the curriculum piece. So really developing hands-on practicum type courses. We're doing some things in partnership with MIT Engineering and MIT Business School in Boston. And then the third piece is an incubator. So trying to find a way to support music startups. Um, you know, we've had a lot of different startups, Panos and Sonic Bids being one person that came out of Berkeley that started a successful business. Benji Rogers, who's here at Meetem from Pledge Music as a Berkeley alum trying to find a way to support those guys, um, you know, through maybe it's office space, maybe it's, it's connections, maybe it's a little bit of funding. Um, we haven't exactly figured out exactly yeah. what we're going to do, but, but really trying to, trying to incubate and support those companies in a way that we haven't in the past. Yeah. And of course, there's no lack of technical talent in Boston, given that you have some of the best universities in the world and the MIT is just around the corner from Berkeley. So I guess you know, there's definitely scope for some collaborations there. I mean, one of the most uh, interesting and important music companies to come out of the, sort of the tech space in the last few years is the Econest, and they're yeah. also based in Boston. So definitely a lot of synergies there. Yeah, I mean, it, and uh, Econest has been really supportive of Berkeley. I have uh, a couple of former students from Berkeley who are working at Econest. They really are, are an innovative company and you're seeing, you see, you see music startups in, in Boston. Um, you know, I think Silicon Valley still dominates when it comes to tech and music startups, but there are a lot of people doing a lot of interesting things in Boston and we want to foster that and have more of that activity going on. And particularly with a student body of 5,000 that, yeah. that all have innovative ideas, we want to make sure that we're 
we're offering opportunities for people to succeed. Yeah, sure. And uh, do you find that uh, students that are at Berkeley that are looking at opportunities besides the music itself into the business side of things uh, are really looking at technologies as, as a potential new outlet to form companies to make something of themselves, which is not just you know the usual I want to work for a label or, or I want to I want to work for a publisher. Yeah, I mean I think I've been at Berkeley for seven years and I've seen a dramatic shift in the student attitudes because when I when I came on in 2007 it was still very much a, I'm going to go to Berkeley and if I want to be in the music business I'm going to try to get an internship at Columbia and then I want to work for a record label and now I think people realize that maybe that's not a viable career path or maybe it's not the best option and you know some people are more entrepreneurial than others and yeah. and so we have students that are 19 or 20 years old and have really great ideas and they just they need some support to kind of get off the ground they're young they don't necessarily have the financial resources or know exactly where to go with their business and so that's part of this is giving giving those young guys and girls um, the tools to succeed and and kind of trying to help them reach the next level with their business. Yeah. So on that front, you know, you were talking about the program itself and as far as courses go, like uh, in, on the undergrad uh, undergrad front, uh, what, what kind of uh, tools do you give students uh, uh, to, uh, you know, consider these alternative pa career paths? So, you know, we have a number of entrepreneurship courses and courses on business startups and traditional music business courses where people learn about the music business. Uh, but with the new Entrepreneurship Institute, there will actually be entrepreneurship practicum courses. And one of the things we're trying to do is bridge partnerships with academia and business and maybe take on real, have our students take on real life projects and problems that, that music companies have and in partnership with MIT engineering or, or maybe on their own, try to solve those problems. And, and it gives the, the companies a relationship with academia and they get some benefit by having some external thought on whatever their problem may be. And then our students get great real-world practical experience. So we've got a couple of those projects that are going on now. Um, I think you saw Lior Cohen yesterday in his, um, in his speech reference that. So we're, uh, our students are working on something for his 300 project. Um, so it's an exciting time. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's definitely a time of shift in the music industry. And I think a lot of... Uh, uh, I'm seeing a lot of great uh, students that are, are, are making like fast moves in the music industry by uh, skipping uh, some of the usual traditional paths that you were talking about, like starting at a major label, uh, by, by working for small in independent companies, creating relationships, uh, coming to events like media, making uh, a name for themselves, and then you know being able to to branch out to to bigger artists uh, pretty quickly, like uh, you know, much much more quickly than it would have been like maybe ten years ago, right? Yeah, I mean, I have a I have a former student um, from not that long ago who has a company called Eyes and Ears Entertainment in the U.S., and they are doing web design and, and kind of um, online presence work for really big artists, Beyonce and others. Um, and you know, this is someone who graduated maybe four years ago and has a great great company and a great business. And I think they just either merged or bought someone else. And so it's um, there's a lot of activity and a lot of young students that are doing really 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 great things and that's the i mean that's always been the future of the business so and uh, finally uh, on the online side uh, uh, i know that that's probably not your focus but uh, do you have anything on that uh, sort of entrepreneurial business front on the online courses side just in case anybody that's, that was watching was interested in that yeah i mean we have a we now offer an online mba in music business actually um, through our online extension school um, it has an entrepreneurship component to it it's not it doesn't have a concentration on entrepreneurship but I think, you know, both in our programs on our Boston campus and our Valencia campus, there's been a real push to incorporate more entrepreneurship because just since the economic downturn in 2008, you've seen a lot of people, and, and the music downturn in general, you've seen a lot of people go out and start their own companies. And, and you know, as I said, artists are entrepreneurs, artist managers are artist entrepreneurs. There, yes, there are people that are working at big companies like Live Nation and Ticketmaster and Spotify. But there are a lot of small companies doing interesting things in the music business. That's awesome. Well, uh, thanks, Alan, for your time. And uh, it's uh, berkeley.edu, right? Yes. At rethink-music.com. Rethink-music.com. And I've got a lot of listeners in Germany as well, so I'm sure they'll be interested in hearing what, what happens with, uh, with uh, this year's event in Berlin. And uh, it's fantastic. Uh, thanks, thanks so much for your time. Yeah, thank you for having me again.
It's great. Wish you a good meet in. Yes, so thank you so much. And thanks for watching the Digital Music Trends coverage of Medium 2014. You can find out more on digitalmusictrends.com or youtube.com slash digitalmusictrends.